Joining me on the program right now to discuss uh, this further is uh, the Deputy Publicity Secretary, that's the Deputy National Publicity Secretary now of uh, the opposition PDP, Dr. Emmanuel Agbo. Doctor, thank you very much for joining us on the program. Um, it's not a surprise at all that your party, of course, before now had asked President Mohamed Buhari uh, not to run. And now that he's declared uh, for a second term, what, what, uh, what do you make of it? Uh, yes, hitherto his declaration, the position of the party is that in the larger interest of the nation, that he should do an honorable bow out. Why? Because... His reign on the last three years has been characterized with maximum inefficiency, ineptitude, and lack of solution to the multifarious and multidirectional problems of our nation. Having failed, the honorable thing to do is to really, really exit with some degree of honor, so to say. But now that he has jettisoned the call from distinguished Nigerians, not just the opposition, I am sure that the, you are aware of the responses to his body language from very eminent Nigerians. Chief Olusegun Obasanjo kick-started it all. IBB with his own letter. T.Y. Danjuma, our bishops, the College of Nigerian Bishops, and all distinguished and very eminent personalities across the country had said, enough is enough. Dr. Agbo, I'm, 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 not, I'm not too sure that um, even Danjuma himself uh, did call on the president not to run again. I'm also not too sure that the College of Bishops called on the president not to run. Of course, they have complaints about um, you know, the government, but uh, they never at any time called on the president not to run. In any case, that aside, now that he has declared, don't you think it's now for Nigerians to decide whether or not he would continue to stay in power? Why not? But let's get this straight. He has just declared within his party that in no way precludes other members of his political party from seeking the presidential slot or ticket of that party. And good. And our position had always been that, as far as we are concerned, declaring to run on the ticket of APC does not translate to him become the ticket holder of APC. And that until he becomes the ticket holder of APC, then we'll be prepared to join issues on the basis and take him to Nigerians and take whoever our own candidates to Nigerians on the ticket of what had been, what will be, and what is the expectations of Nigeria moving forward. We will not in any way, we will not in any way glorify this failure by trying to raise issues with his just... Uh, uh, declaring to his party members that he wants to seek re-election. Let's look at it from, from this point of view now. Should he emerge the presidential candidate of uh, the APC? Would your party, would your party be ready to um, square it out with him in uh, 2019? Let's get this straight. And I want to I mean, uh, put this forward before all Nigerians. Whoever the APC, or any of the 63 approved or accepted political parties, as the case might be, by the INEC comes up with as presidential candidates. The People's Democratic Party, after due process, dual internal democratic processes, will equally present a candidate for the PDP for the presidential race. And whoever, notwithstanding, what be he, I be, I mean, uh, 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 Buhari, be he anybody on any other ticket, as far as we are concerned, today the best platform for the development of Nigeria is the People's Democratic Party. This is what we are saying. The way you talk about your party, you talk about your party uh, in such a way that um, it's not the same PDP you're talking about, the same PDP that. Um, Quite a number of Nigerians, some people will tell you that majority of Nigerians still blame the party for uh, the, the problem we have today. And majority of Nigerians 
Some people would argue, had always said, well, for now, the PDP should take a back seat. And we've, as a matter of fact, even the former president you mentioned, uh, former president Obasanjo, has come out strongly against the PDP and, of course, the APC, asking Nigerians not to even consider both political parties at all uh, for 2019 election. Well, uh, I don't know if you and I are talking to different PDP, but if we are talking and making reference to the People's Democratic Party, that governed Nigeria from 1999 through to 2015 with all non-developmental traits. Everything, if you remove whatever the one or two, three structures that have been put on ground by the military, every other thing that you have across the landscape of Nigeria today had been courtesy of the developmental strikes of the People's Democratic Party. Having done all that, is, that are needful in the transformation of the party and having rebranded under new leadership and having taken the bull by the horn to tell Nigerians, part of, part of our mistakes of the past gave way to this leadership that has brought untold hardship hunger, inefficiency, and ineptitude on Nigerians, that we are sorry. On the basis of that apology, we are on a new page with Nigerians. Unfortunately, Dr. Abu, we, we haven't got much time. But le let me just, for the record, say this, because you actually alluded to it when you were talking, saying, uh, say for one or two, three uh, infrastructure development that the military put in place, uh, whatever Nigeria has today is courtesy of the PDP. And uh, I will choose to disagree with you because, I mean, this that is very much debatable because I, I can tell you that, um, you know, th basically the bulk of the infrastructure that this country has today was done under uh, the military and, and not under uh, the civilian government. I mean, we, we can't deny that. Thank God you yourself, you, say, you stated, and uh, I want to quote you, that it is debatable. And uh, uh, my position is still clear. I am not running out the military as having not done anything. I'm happy you have accepted that with me. But when, in comparatively speaking, what the developmental uh, strides of the People's Democratic Party, 1999 through to 2015, is totally incomparable with any other government. Well, because, the there's, because there's, no years. there's no government to compare with. I mean, it, would it be fair now to compare are, are you, 16 you, years with, with two years, years of the ADC? Are not been been governed, or there had been no government, government in Nigeria. Nigeria. Dr. Abe, Dr. Would, it be fair? Dr. Abe, would it be fair to compare 16 years of the PDP with uh, three years of the APC? The issue is not whether we are comparing 16 years with three years. But let us take it now. Can you compare the last three years of this administration with the first three years of uh, Obasanjo's regime? Totally, there is nothing to compare. We came, we saw problems, we attacked those problems. The thing that is with true leadership is your ability to deploy situations to problems you meet on ground. It's not ability to, total, to totally continue to lay blames on previous administrations look for who to blame. Today it is uh, 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 a man that died seven years ago that we are now blaming for insecurity in this country. The last outing of the president, very disastrous, very, very disastrous, very untold some to the totality of the sensibilities of Nigerians. For him, in any aspect, to go to a, an international platform and begin to allude to the fact that insecurity in his country is courtesy of the, uh, some uh, maladministration or the, whatever the scenario of Gaddafi, who died seven years ago. This is what this government is known for. They have done nothing, added no single value to the Nigerian in, in, I mean, political space. It, and then all they have done is to use people who have accepted to be instruments in their hands to continue to lay blames on one person or the other. It is either, it is either Jonathan, I won't be surprised, if the next blame game or the, the person to be blamed the next time, it's you who is anchoring this program today. <laughs> Dr. Abe, you know, you know, thank you very much. Unfortunately, <laughs> we, unfortunately, we run out of time. All right, we'll take a short break and uh, we'll be right back. On Deji 360, we don't just ask the questions. 
What is wrong with amending the constitution the way uh, the, the National Assembly members have been doing it? We seek answers. The constitution is constituent. Our problem is not um, lack of laws. Our problem is lack of the willpower to implement our laws. Answers that provide clarity. While we negotiate, we should try to make it a point that the girls must be complete. The clarity you need to make informed judgment so that you can make the right decision and take action. People are saying it is you politicians that are responsible for this, that you are the reason why oh, this is happening. All these dollars that call themselves governors in this country? I wish we had people like Tony at the National Assembly. God forbid that I go to join that uh, <laughs> family. DG360, providing clarity to issues.